Good morning. Welcome to Divine Peace Church. Those in person, welcome to those joining us online. Today is the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. This morning's message will be based on our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 52. The theme is Keep the Treasure in Your Possession. Service will begin with the singing of our opening hymn, hymn 349. Jesus, priceless treasure.
Service continues on page 5. I invite all those who are able to please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all our sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, He has removed your guilt forever. You are His own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to His will. Amen. It's now time for prayer, so I encourage all children and adults too uh, to stop what you're doing. Uh, bow your heads and fold your hands. Lord, your ears are always open to the prayers of your humble servants who come to you in Jesus' name. Teach us always to ask according to your will that we may never fail to obtain the blessings you have promised through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated. First lesson for this morning is recorded in 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon is getting ready to be king of Israel, and God comes to him, allowing him to ask a request. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. This is the word of the Lord. We'll join together to speak responsibly the psalm for today, Psalm 119. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees, then I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant, so that you may be feared. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Second reading is from Romans chapter 8. God assures us that He has done everything to make you part of his kingdom. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. 
For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. I now invite all those who are able to please stand for the words of the gospel. Again, our gospel reading this morning will serve as the basis for the sermon. It comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 52, if you'd like to follow along at home. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house, who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. Christ. May be seated. We'll join to sing the next hymn, hymn 421, All Depends on Our Possessing. Thank you. 
service continues. Again, if you'd like to follow along at home, reading is Matthew 13, verses 44 through 52. For those here, you can follow along in your worship folder. We'll begin with this prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I only eat organic. It's a statement I've heard over the last uh, few years, quite a while now, and uh, it's a bold statement to make. Any time that you say, I'm only going to do one thing, uh, it means there's no compromise. So if somebody were to say, I only eat organic, they only have one section of the grocery store to shop in. If somebody were to say, I only eat organic, There are only certain items from the menu that you can order at a restaurant, or perhaps only certain restaurants that you can even eat at. If someone says, I only eat organic, if they're in a situation where there isn't something labeled as organic, they have to go hungry. And now I've I've even seen uh, that there's an option to buy uh, organic clothing. So somebody could say, I only eat and wear organic. And I wonder, too, then, if somebody, uh, perhaps even already, has gone so far as to say, I will only live organic. I will only eat and wear. I will only have things in my life that have that label organic. Anything else I will not touch, I will not deal with, I will not live with, I will not use. When you only have one thing that you possess... When you care about it so much, when it becomes your treasure, people see it. People can see it. It comes out in the way that you live your life. If somebody were to say, I only eat organic, then, and maybe you heard this too, the news spooking around that we may not have Halloween this year. Well, if somebody only eats organic, you'll see that they're not really very upset about that. Because they would never touch all of the processed little treasures that are in the bottom of a kid's uh, pillowcase after going trick-or-treating. If somebody's a big fan of baseball, especially for a a St. Louis Cardinals fan, you've probably been able to notice, either at work or at home, that they're a little bit more irritable. Already the baseball season has been cut short. There's already a, a much smaller number of games. But now, because of the virus, even that limited season has been postponed further. And those few games that they have been able to watch have not been enough to satisfy their their need, their desire to watch baseball. If you know somebody that that went to the gym five days a week, now their gym's closed. We can still see uh, that they're working out. They're not posting selfies of the gym, but they're posting selfies of them finding creative ways to work out at home, in the living room or in the backyard. People can see uh, what you treasure as your possession. It, it comes out in the way that you live your life. In a reading from Matthew 13, Jesus talked about what a treasure the kingdom of God is for us. He used a couple of very short parables to show the tremendous value of the kingdom of God. First, he said, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, He went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Jesus' point with these two very short parables is that the kingdom of heaven is a treasure worth far more than anything else in our lives. It far always any other possession, any other thing, any other person in your life. It has true and lasting value. Our temptation then, as believers... Our temptation is to forget or dismiss that value. And the danger in that was the point of Jesus' next parable, 
Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up onto the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. Jesus used this parable of a net full of fish to describe judgment day. When Jesus returns, he will find those who believe in him, those who treasured him among, above all else in their lives, and they will be brought to live with him in heaven. On judgment day too, Jesus will find those who claim to believe in him. But really, they treasured the things of this world more than him. They lost their faith. Those will be thrown into hell. This is our temptation to lose sight of the great treasure that we have, being members of the kingdom of heaven. And so we need a good defense against losing sight of this great value. One good defense is to know what it's like to study and understand what a life looks like that does not value the kingdom of heaven as if it were the greatest treasure in their life. Here are some examples of what that looks like. If you do not thank God, every morning that you get up for keeping you alive through the night. If you do not thank God for the many meals, even snacks, for the clean water and many different kinds of beverages that you get to enjoy every day. If you do not thank God for having a job or money to be able to buy food and shelter or insurance or pay for college, or transportation, or health care, or entertainment. If you do not thank God that you have found someone to spend the rest of your life with in marriage. If you do not thank God for a marriage that lasts. If you do not give thanks to God for the ability to become pregnant. For a safe pregnancy, for a safe delivery, for children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. If you do not thank God for the fact that he allows you to have an education, friends, safety, a government. And these are just earthly treasures, temporary treasures, things that we'll enjoy in this world. Even more than these is not thanking God for his eternal treasures that he has given to you. The fact that God chose you to be part of his kingdom. When you deserved to live out your days in sin, to die and suffer in hell. Not thanking God for your baptism, for allowing the word of God to be in your life, for the Holy Spirit's gift of faith. Not thanking God for the gift that Jesus came down to live as one of us, to live a good and kind, righteous, loving, innocent life, a life that he put to death on the cross, suffering for your sins, so that he could rise, earning the right to say your sins are forgiven, so that you could say, God, look at Jesus' righteousness so that I can be accepted into heaven. Not thanking God that one day he will give you a body that is immortal, healthy, perfect. A body that will experience wonderful joy in heaven. This is an example of the temptation that you face to stop valuing the many treasures that God has given you. Yes, even the temporary ones in this world, but even more so, the wonderful, eternal, the spiritual treasures that God has given to you. To live your life as if you feel entitled to the treasures that you have in your life or that you deserve them or that you are the one that has worked so hard for them without giving any thanks to God. Or again, to look at your spiritual treasures in God as if there's something that's just going to be there for you. Even though you spend most of your time pouring all of your love and devotion into things that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God 
and cause you to constantly forget about what Jesus has done for you. Understanding what life looks like when you do not treasure the kingdom of God is a good defense. But the best, the best defense for understanding the great treasure that you have, possessing the kingdom of heaven, is to hear what Jesus has done for you. God records what he has done for you through Paul in Romans chapter 8. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. These verses summarize the true treasure of the Bible. These verses summarize what we often call the gospel. The gospel, the good news of the Bible. The message that runs throughout the entire Bible is this, that God has always known you. He has always planned that you would be one of His kingdom. He always planned that you would be called to faith by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would be baptized into His kingdom. Whether that happened early on in your life or whether that happened later in your life, God always had a plan that He would be the one that would call you to faith. God always planned that Jesus would come to this world to suffer and die for you. That you would be called righteous for His sake. Not that you would be called righteous or good or acceptable in God's eyes for something that you cannot do as a sinner but something that would be done for you. God has always planned this, and we can see it in this verse. God even says that you are glorified, which is something that has not happened yet. But he speaks as if it has been done for you, that you are glorified, that again you have this immortal, perfectly healthy, last forever new body that will live in heaven experiencing all peace and joy and love. That you will live among brothers and sisters, fully accepted forever. God speaks as if this is already done. Because it does not depend on you and what you do or how you live your life. He speaks as if you are already glorified because it depends on Jesus. And nothing changes what he has done for you. It is a guarantee And so then God also, He always wants you to be connected to His Word. To listen, to read, to hear, to watch. To hear the Word of God. This is what keeps your faith in Jesus strong. This is what keeps you from being pulled away from Jesus to fill your time with the temporary so-called treasures of this world. The treasure is yours. Yours because of what God has done for you. Keep it as your possession, as did the wisest man who ever lived. In 1 Kings chapter 3, we hear about King Solomon. He had something in his possession, and God wanted him to keep it. Solomon was the son of King David. He was going to inherit the kingdom of Israel. And God appeared to him one evening asking him to ask God for anything, and God would give it to him. And Solomon asked for wisdom, wisdom to rule God's great people. And the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice. I will do what you have asked. The treasure that Solomon kept, even when faced with the treasures of an entire kingdom, was his trust in God. Solomon did not ask for great material wealth, but wisdom from God to rule his people. 
And Solomon did rule with great wisdom. The Bible calls him the wisest person who has ever lived. And he accumulated great material wealth and grew the kingdom of Israel. That great wealth became a temptation for him. But for all of that, we hear in the book that he wrote in Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, meaningless. Looking at his great kingdom, his vast wealth, all of the knowledge that he had, he said, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. He concludes, he says, fear God and keep his commands, for this is the duty of all mankind. Even with all of the wealth you could even possibly dream for or work for in your life, Solomon still recognized that fear of God was his greatest possession. You are wise like Solomon because you have fear of God. You have trust and faith in him. When you feel pulled away from him by other things in your life, stop. Stop and return to the word. Again, the Holy Spirit will keep your faith strong in Jesus by being in his word, by hearing again of the great treasures that are stored up for you in heaven. I only live organic. It's a phrase that I have heard. It means there's no compromise. But really, whether you choose to buy or eat organic or not, it's okay. You've got the option. But if somebody were to pursue this life, to say that in every aspect of my life I will live organic and it becomes this all-consuming thing that you lose sight of everything else in your life and you become dedicated to only living this way and everything else falls away from you. What do you treasure? And it can be all kinds of things. When you're tempted to leave Jesus behind for another calling, to dedicate your life to something, to define your life by something that distracts you from the kingdom of God, something that can do nothing for you on Judgment Day, leave it behind in the dirt and keep the treasure in your possession. Jesus. Amen. At this time, uh, an encouragement, uh, especially for those joining us online, to check in. You can click the link uh, to the online connection card and fill that out. You can also there submit any prayer requests that you have. For those joining us in person, uh, you can do the same after the service. You can go to the website and fill out the connection card or go to this live stream. For those that would like to give, the offering plates are in the back on the table. If you'd like to give online, you can go to divinepeace.com and click on the Give tab. And a further encouragement to share, share this great treasure that you have in Jesus. You can very easily share this live stream link. You can share it later at home. You can check in or, or send a brief message to somebody telling them about the great things that Jesus has done for them. Our service will now continue on page 11. We will speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continue with the prayer of the church. Again, 
Time to stop, drop your head, and fold your hands. Lord God, our Maker and Preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us, day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from all that would divide us from you and one another, the devil, the fallen world, and our sinful nature. Lord, take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. Bless and keep all those who are sick and suffering. This morning we especially pray for the family of Joanne Rainey, Daniel Rainey's stepmother, who was called home uh, to heaven this past week. Please give the f- Jason Simonek, Carla Bender's cousin, Cindy's son, who is back in the ICU, Ashley Lindsay, Emily Sholock's friend, recovering from a stroke. Sherry De La Garza, who will be having back surgery. Be with Keith Smith and his recovery after a liver transplant. With Benj, Sylvia Payet's grandson, in his struggle with seizures. Today, uh, he will begin a three-day stay in the hospital for observations and further tests. We pray that out of them will come more answers and good treatments. Uh, be with Aubrey Smith. Uh, she's the daughter of Rachel Woody Smith um, in the hospital. We pray that uh, very soon they would find answers and that she would be able to return home. Those uh, continuing to recover, uh, Jimmy, who is at home recovering with his wife Anne, those are friends of the Ivies. And we give many thanks for Trace's mother Lynn who will be moving from an ICU room to a regular room in the hospital. We pray continued blessings on her recovery. Give strength to those battling cancer. Gwen Mon and Terry Washick, Mark Bradley and Charlie Williams, Tammy and Telena, Valerie Compton, Kelly Wilcox, and young Isaac. We also pray uh, that you would be with all of those in their plans and decisions going forward for the return to school and continued prayers for all first responders responders and medical personnel uh, helping us in the fight against the virus. Now hear us as we bring you our private prayers. Lord, you opened the kingdom of heaven to us. Until we enter it, let us keep you as our greatest treasure. And now hear us as we join together to pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We'll now join together to sing the song of praise. It was introduced last week. Um, As the soloist sings, please feel free to join in as you feel comfortable. <laughs> 